Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and this is part four of my Building Your Communications Plan series, and the subject of today's video is going to be channels and talk paths. Now, the terms channel and talk path frequency are pretty much used interchangeably, but there are differences. Uh, channels are an equipment resource. Frequencies are a radio spectrum resource and talk paths are your communication plan resource. Now, you're going to have a lot of definitions of different types of channels and we're going to go over all those definitions in this video and it's food for thought for potential for when you build your communications plan depending upon the scope of the incident you're using it for and how you're going to use those resources. Now, naming conventions. This is something that you want to have common names for all channels that are going to be shared amongst other users. You basically want to be able to relate to your users and to users from an outside agency or group what the purpose of the channel is. Much of the information in this video series can be downloaded for free. It's a free resource and you get the NIFOG, which is the National Interoperability Field Operations Guide, and the OXCOM, which is the Auxiliary Communications Field Operations Guide. Both of these publications are freely downloadable and they are full of valuable information. So do yourself a favor, uh, steer your browser to this website right here, download both of these PDF files, print them up, put them in a binder, and keep them as reference material. Briefly, we're going to go over some radio usage guidelines that you can utilize as a radio operator yourself and also you can impart upon other operators and users of your communications plan. And at the top of the list is to be concise. Be brief and to the point in your radio transmissions. The second is to be clear. That means to use your equipment correctly, speak correctly into the microphone, don't mumble, be coherent. Uh, the guy whose cheese is sliding off of his cracker should not be the guy that's on the radio. And you need to be courteous. There's no reason to argue over the radio. And collect your thoughts before you hit your push to talk button. Don't be the person who inserts pauses into their transmission. Keep his microphone button depressed while he's looking for the information he should have had before he made the transmission in the first place. Call signs. Call signs are basically how you identify and we're not talking about your uh, amateur radio call sign per se or a unique identifier to you as an individual but we're talking about for your, the sake of your communications plan and you can have a functional call sign which is like ICS or task based such as command squad division com or you can have a non-functional which is thunderbird or flesh hammer or something of that nature which in a smaller group something like that would work but in a larger group you end up having to have a corresponding roster to keep track of everything as the communications plan grows. So essentially pick a system useful for plan growth. Existing infrastructure. For the purposes of this lecture, existing infrastructure means a system that's up and running 24-7, 365, like the cellular telephone network, etc., etc. And it's a system that you're an authorized user of or that you're in the chain of command to actually take steps to reallocate resources to a certain incident, or it's a system you have complete and total control over. Uh, and in that case, it's very simple for you because you're just going to assign channels or talk groups to the best support your operation. And the large concern is interop strategy, meaning how are we going to take people from outside of our system and integrate them? These are the various talk paths we're going to be discussing this lecture today. And you have your tactical talk path, interop, a calling, distress, a regroup, and an informational. Now you may not use all of these various types of talk paths in your communications plan but it's important that you become familiar with each and every one of them. To remember these or the mnemonic is tick dry. The tactical talk path this is your bread and butter. This is the foundation of your communications plan and it's likely the first talk path that you're going to establish. And it's a working channel. This is essentially where you're going to 
perform your mission statement is going to be performed on your tactical channel, your tactical talk group. Now, you can see that I've got it divided up here into local and wide area. Local is just a simplex channel, radio to radio. Again, if you don't need to tie up a resource for certain functions, there's no need to do so. There's no need to go on a repeated network when people are working within a few hundred yards of each other to give each other instructions. You can actually subdivide different simplex channels if desired, if the scope of the incident is large enough, and they could be task related or location related depending upon your plan. Wide area is your repeated. That means that your transmissions are going to cover a much wider area and it's going to provide better coverage. And for reasons like that, it's known as a command net. This is basically something to where you can take all of the users can hear the traffic on the command net and it's good for safety and information. It's also be advised that when you use something like that, there is a larger RF footprint involved which is not desirable in certain circumstances due to coordination issues and interference issues. Tactical channels are generally limited to users within your communications plan. These are the people that you've already got the communications plan drawn up for. It's important to share tactical channels with other groups that you may be operating with on a regular basis so you can have these pre-planned tactical channels so it's easy to seamlessly integrate these resources into your communications plan. Interop. Interop is a resource to facilitate operation with others outside of your communications plan. Essentially it's kind of like an RF adapter to where an RF adapter will bridge two RF cables together whether they're the same type of RF connection or they're different types of RF connections. Some of the examples of Interop talk paths are a shared resource tactical channels which are what the NIFOG has lots and lots of and that is an interop channel is truly a tactical channel it's designed to allow those shared resources to be used between agencies to accomplish the same goal or common goals there's adjuncts such as a, a gateway device or the use of a crossband repeater console patching uh, this is something with existing infrastructure that's a reality that's done at like the console level like in a dispatch center that brings in two like neighboring jurisdiction radio systems together to uh, facilitate a patch, kind of like how they bridge talk groups together in a trunking system. The use of an interop radio cache, which is just, you would have a cache of radios that would operate on multiple bands in order to facilitate interoperation with another group. And ultimately, what I think the most practical is, is the implementation of a tick plan. And this is basically establishing a plan amongst other groups that you're going to work with or that you know you're going to work with in the future of having some kind of a tactical interoperable communications plan. So if you do work together, you already have a plan in place, usually utilizing resources from either side to facilitate communication with one another and seamless integration of communication plans. These are a couple other uh, interop solutions here. One is the unified command post which is a rapid interop solution. Essentially when you, that resource is there you just essentially take personnel from that resource utilizing the communications assets of that particular resource and being in face-to-face -face contact with one another which essentially forms a human relay and that can be an incredibly effective communication solution if it's practical for your particular situation. Another is resource integration, which creating strike teams out of different, these different resources and putting them together, utilizing the communications assets of one particular organization. Calling channel or calling talk path, and this is used to initiate contact with resources outside of your communications plan, and it's important to remember it's not a tactical channel. It's only a means to communicate with someone else or to contact that individual or organization group or whatever outside of your active communications plan. Having an established and predetermined calling frequency allows you the ability to either contact outside resources or have other outside resources contact you. The most basic calling channel or talk path that we would use in everyday life is your cellular telephone or your telephone number at home. This allows people from outside of your day-to-day -day existence to contact you.
and basically your telephone number is nothing more than a specific address to route said traffic. Now, in other circumstances, if you're going to do it with just radio only, and you have existing infrastructure, that's a good way to do it. And perhaps through interagency agreement, you have access to each other's tactical channels or their dispatch frequencies or whatever, and therefore you could go ahead and just call up directly on that. But lacking that, there needs to be some kind of a common shared resource channel or frequencies. And it's important that whenever you're using these shared resource channels or frequencies, that you always set them up for carrier squelch receive. Now down here at the bottom, we've got some examples here. Uh, we've got your NIFOG channels and ham radio. You know, these are FM calling frequencies, and there's various others for different modes. In MURS, the channel 1 is, a, is commonly considered to be the calling channel. The, uh, in GMRS, channel 1 as well. Uh, CB channel 9, that's supposed to be an emergency channel, but that's one that a lot of the uh, citizens band radios actually will have a channel 9 priority receive. So if you were to contact that, even if that were there on another channel, it might steer them back to that channel 9 traffic if they have that enabled in their radio. In HF radio, there's numerous mode-specific and band-specific calling frequencies, and for brevity's sake, I chose not to put those on here. In marine radio, routine calling frequency is channel 9. Distress talk path. Distress frequencies are assigned for use in emergencies. These are monitored by agencies tasked with responding to those in distress. Our most basic one is 911. Uh, an alternate to that is, is the non-emergency number of the jurisdiction that you're currently located in. Oftentimes, if you're in a national park or a state park, sometimes they'll have the ranger's phone number listed on one of the informational kiosks, and you should write that number down in your notes. Fixed infrastructure. Uh, if you have access to your radio system to contact your dispatch, your dispatch will be your lifeline. Marine emergencies. VHF channel 16, 156.800 MHz FM. Civil aviation. The distress frequency is 121.5 MHz in an AM mode. Military air, 243 MHz AM. Your modern distress beacons, your EPIRBs, ELTs, and PLBs, 406 megahertz, and those are transmitting to satellites. And if you're in close proximity to them, you may be able to pick up their transmissions. Your older beacons would transmit on 121.5 megahertz and 243 megahertz with a tone. Avalanche beacons. Avalanche beacons are specialized, extremely low frequency transmitters, and they have a specialized receiver that uses signal strength to locate those who were engulfed in snow, and those are at 457 kilohertz. And Iridium satellite telephones, they support 911 through an intermediary emergency response center that will take your information and try to route you to the nearest PSAP. That only applies to the USA. Additional information on marine distress. VHF channel 16 is your voice distress channel. VHF channel 70 is your digital selective calling channel. On HF, the channels monitored by the Coast Guard are in the evening, 4125 kilohertz during 24-hour periods, 6215 kilohertz and 8291 kilohertz, and during the daytime, 12290 kilohertz. For your digital selective calling on HF, 4207.5 kilohertz, 6312 kilohertz, 8414.5 kilohertz, 12577 kilohertz, and 16804.5 kilohertz. And to the right, you'll see this is your Mayday format for VHF 16 voice. You give Mayday times three, which is Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is your vessel name three times. Mayday and your vessel name again. Your position in latitude and longitude or approximate bearing to a uh, object you perhaps observe and know what it is. Your nature of your distress. The assistance that you require. The number of persons on board. And whatever additional info is relevant to your distress and then follow and close your transmission by saying over. Aviation distress, 121.5 MHz and 243 MHz AM. To the right, we have a aviation distress message. Again, Mayday times three, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. The name of the station you're calling. If you don't know the name of the station, you could say any station. 
This is your aircraft call sign, your aircraft type, the nature of your emergency, the intentions of you as a pilot, your position, level, altitude, and heading, the pilot qualifications, and any additional information. And you can see the mnemonic for this distress format is NAN IPA. Regroup. This is your SHTF fallback channel. Essentially, this is your emergency channel that you have engineered into your communications plan. It's when your infrastructure fails and need a talk path to put everybody on to organize. You want your regroup channel to be easily accessed. You want to have it accessed with the home button or the emergency button if your equipment supports it or at the end of your channel selector rotation. You want it to be the same frequency across all equipment platforms. So whether they're mobile radios, portable radios, or radios you're using as a base station. You may have to rely on a human relay to pass traffic. And if your area of operation is large enough, it may be necessary to reposition mobile radios to provide coverage. Regroup implementation. Uh, this isn't as easy as it sounds because of depending upon how complex your plan is. The regroup order is regroup, regroup, regroup. And that's announced over whatever tactical channels are currently operating. At that point, all users should select the regroup channel. And then a PAR check is performed. And it's performed in order, yeah, alphabetical order. Team leaders will report for their team. Like alpha team plus four. Bravo team plus four. Individuals will report by their call sign. For example, comms, par, copy. Anyone who hasn't ever tried to do this before to try to get everybody to switch channels during the middle of an incident doesn't really appreciate just how difficult it is. If you decide to use a system such as this, you need to train on it and make sure that everybody is 100% on the same page in implementing any kind of a regroup protocol. And informational channels. These are channels outside of your plan that provide information important to your plan, uh, such as weather forecasts, NOAA. It's always good to put the weather channel in your area in one of the positions in your radio template. If you have an aviation radio or a scanner, you can listen to the automatic terminal information service, which will give you information if you're close to an airport, relevant to that airport. Uh, media broadcast. Most of your uh, broadbanded receivers in your amateur radio equipment now will cover the FM broadcast band so if you need to use that as an information source you may do so and other monitored radio sources that you may not be in communication with but may be providing information that you find relevant to your current operation okay putting it all together I'm currently checking the east pasture fence I have my two-way radio my two-way radio is tuned to my local area tactical channel with the change of the selector switch I can bring this up to my wide area tactical channel, which is VHF P25 simulcast. And with a change of a zone selection, I can go ahead and change this to one of my interop channels. I have my scan list and I have scan on, and my priority scan list channel is my calling channel. Now that we've discussed this talk path terminology, please take these into consideration in creating your own programming template for your two way radio for your group. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comps. Till next time.